spine is made up of segments called the vertebrae, um, with other segments called vertebral discs in between. These discs are made up of a mucoprotein gelatinous core surrounded by layers of collagen, and they act in between the bony ver vertebrae as shock absorbers, basically absorbing any shock forces between the vertebrae, uh, preventing damage, and they also act as ligaments. So they connect the different segments of the spine so that the spine can move together. Um, and thousands of people in the United States every year are affected by issues with their discs, such as herniated discs, in which the collagen layers are ruptured, and then the core leaks out, or slip discs, in which the disc slips out from in between the vertebrae. And this can happen due to the different forces that act on the spine, which are the weight from the body, torsional forces uh, from activities such as baseball, my disc! Or bending forces, such as um, when you're slouching in a chair. Oh, I, I think it slipped! So in this video, we're going to analyze some of these forces <coughs> to see what sorts of materials we need to use in order to create um, replacements or implants for these discs. Okay. So in order to solve our problem, we want to model it as a linearized, thin-walled cylinder under pressure, extension, and torsion at the same time. And we're going to look for the maximum forces, uh, the maximum stresses, and uh, what kind of uh, material constants we need in order to uh, design the optimal replacement. Uh, so what we can do is uh, solve for a thin-walled uh, pressurized cylinder under extension and torsion with these equations. Uh, we, we know this from, uh, from uh, class, where we can say that the uh, circumferential uh, the circum the circumferential stress is related to the pressure, the axial is related to the body weight and pressure, and then torsional is related to the torsional stress. Putting all this together, we can solve for the principal axial stress, and if we know this principal axial stress and where its max value is at, we can use this equation for the principal angle to find where these micro stresses and cracks can occur, and we know that our liquid uh, gelatinous ore will leak out. And so, putting all that together, we can actually solve for the Young's modulus, and then from the Young's modulus, we can take these parameters that we solved for, such as pressure and weight, and make different types of disc replacements for different types of people, such as young people and old people, who will have different pressures in their spine, different weights, and different uh, weights. In real life, a uh, disc is a viscoelastic material. And in our model, we, used, we modeled the disc as elastic. So that may have some downstream consequences in terms of mechanical transduction, and generation of tissue. Currently in the literature, people are using finite element analysis. So in the future, we seek to improve our model by using finite element analysis. And to conclude, our model is a good simplification, but it definitely can be improved, and we hope to do that in the coming months.